Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the Envelope Live screening series. I'm Michael Ordonia. I cover film, television, and pop culture for the Los Angeles Times. The film you've just seen, Great Freedom, has been nominated for and won a number of prizes throughout Europe, including the Ansartan Regard Jury Prize at Cannes. It's Austria's official submission at the 2022 Oscars and has been shortlisted for the International Feature Award. Joining us now to chat about the film are its writer and director, Sebastian Meisse, making his first feature in 10 years. He did make the documentary outing during that time. And its star, Franz Rogowski, who plays Hans in the film and who has likewise received a number of awards and nominations for his work in Great Freedom. Sebastian and Franz, welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks a lot. Uh, I want to congratulate you again on, on all the acclaim the film has received, and especially for being shortlisted for the Oscar. We were uh, talking about this very briefly before off camera, but uh, I'm just curious about what you did when you learned you were shortlisted. Well, I was, uh, I was quite happy, really happy, because... Um, um, you know, there, there, so, there were so many great films um, um, last year because uh, many films, they were held back during the pandemic and uh, then all of a sudden they came out all at once. And, um, and we knew it's going to be really hard to, to find a place alongside uh, all these um, big productions and great films. So, um, and then with Cannes, we, the film made a journey, um, which was incredible, which was really, really unexpected. So, um, yeah, we're really happy to, to be now um, on the list with uh, some of the most important international films this year, from last year. It's uh, incredible. Franz, what did you do when you heard? Um, well, I... I uh, I think I had similar feelings. I was I felt very honored and I was very happy to be surrounded by so much uh, great work from last year. And you know we've always uh, worked hard for that movie, and we hoped for the best. But you never know, so we are quite excited. Yeah, there there certainly were a great many uh, remarkable films that are competing in the international feature category this year. So uh, I'd like to get to the root of the story of, uh, of Great Freedom. Uh, <clears throat> Sebastian, I know that you interviewed a number of people who were victimized by par paragraph 175 mm -hmm. over the years. Um, I wonder, were you interviewing them because you wanted to write about their experience for a film or did their experiences actually end up in the film somehow? In a way, I mean, um, that's always the starting point for me for, for a film. It's um, to, to get a connection to, to reality somehow. And, um, and when I learned about this paragraph, I mean, I knew about, uh, I knew that homosexuality, homosexuality was illegal at one point. Uh, I, this is what, I mean, everybody knows in a way, but um, uh, um, concerning this, this paragraph, there were so many aspects that were completely new to me, and um, and uh, we knew we had to to get into research and to, to talk to people who really experienced um, what it was like back then. Because um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not about um, how many people were were imprisoned back then. It's I mean, this was a. a it destroyed so many lives, you know, and um, and so we we knew we had to talk to people who who whose lives were destroyed back then, and um, and uh, somehow, of course, they, they. It's not that the stories ended up in the film, but they, it influenced all these stories influenced uh, the the writing, of course. Yeah. Franz, did were you privy to that research? Did that uh, background affect your portrayal of Hans? Yes, of course. Um, I mean, I'd never try to play a profession or a sexual orientation. Um, for me, at the end of the day, it's a love story, you know. Of course, mm -hmm. every story is also uh, political, and you're always embodying history to a certain degree, but um, I never try to 
to, you know, accomplish something in terms of knowing who he is and portraying, I don't know, a certain kind of uh, sexuality or trauma. But I tried to be truthful to the character in terms of giving him my soul and my feelings and um, and to surrender to the fictional reality that we create. So mm. I guess I was aware of all those dimensions, but when it comes to acting, I try to simplify it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, I'm at the you... end of the day, if you're in a situation and, and, and you're trying to, to, to just be real, and you don't need to know so much. Uh, when you prepare, you're quite brainy and you read a lot and you you talk a lot about it. But once you are a character, you don't... I, like me, I don't put too much weight on my back. Hmm. Um, I am glad that you uh, described it as a love story. That's certainly what uh, I come away with. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I want to take a, a moment to praise uh, Sebastian Durer, uh, your screenplay, um, co-written, of course, with your with your partner, but um, that I, I really like the way it revealed information. Um, mm. It was shocking when you know when we saw the tattoo on his arm. Um, it was you know all, all those reveals are, are very well placed. But what what I leave the film with is that it's it evolves from this um, terrible experience in prison to being about friendship and being about love. Um, mm. Therefore, to me, the actors and their chemistry are absolutely at the fore. And you've said that uh, that these two actors, Franz and George, were uh, the ones you wanted most for the roles. Can you tell me something about this, especially with Franz here with us? Uh, tell me something about what it was you saw in them that, that made them the ones for the roles. As Franz sits there uncomfortably listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can't really say it's a it's a gut feeling. I mean, I knew I knew Georg from from Austria. I, I've seen him in Ulrich Seidel's Hundstage when I was a student. So I knew I wanted to work with him. I knew that for many many years. And uh, Franz, I learned to know, um, um, yeah, over the past years um, with with all the the films he did and. Um, uh, I, I, I remember the first film I saw with him um, was, uh, I, I, I immediately felt um, he's uh, one of the greatest actors for me. And um, so, um, and, then, and then there was the op this opportunity to, to have this couple, you know, this very special couple and, um, and to work with my favorite actors. This was, um, this is what I, um, what I really uh, hoped I could achieve with this film, and I'm really, really glad they they both agreed. And um, and what came out, I'm really happy. Uh, Franz, when you got this script and you you saw all of the uh, the things it was going to demand of you, especially if, uh, checking in with you over thirty years, <clears throat> and the you know the tremendous personal changes he undergoes during that time. Uh, what was your response to that? I mean, what, what did you see as the main challenges in it and, and the primary elements in it that, that you really wanted to take on? Um, I guess I was inspired from the first moment uh, because these characters don't need to explain too much. Um, they don't uh, lose their dignity to a storytelling. They don't have to justify you know, constructions that a screenwriter created. Um, I I felt that this character is very, let's say, um, uh, yeah, he, he keeps a secret throughout this story. And even though he reveals a lot of emotions, he's not serving the purpose of a director, but he's actually living within this um, walls to find his freedom and I think not just in terms of the drama but also in terms of his uh, his acting his relationships and um, 
therefore I was inspired from the first moment and we met and we talked about it and uh, I guess we just felt that we have to do it so it didn't take mm -hmm. me much to say yes um, also the combination with Georg Friedrich um, felt very good and I was uh, yeah from the start actually uh, quite excited about this project uh, I, I thought Georg was wonderful as as Victor. Um, I thought he struck such a, a wonderful balance um, going from this the 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 extreme toughness and um, uh, I don't know what you'd call it uh, the hardness of that that we see in Victor in the beginning to showing some empathy and humanity as, it, as we go along. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, the chemistry between Georg and, and Franz is. You know, without it, the, the film doesn't work. So, uh, Franz, I, I've read that you two hung out in your cell together when, when you didn't have to. Is that true? I mean, how did that develop between you two? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, making a movie, that means hanging out in cells, more or less. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, yeah, uh, overcome the fact that it's just all made up and that you don't really know each other. And Georg is... Uh, is a truthful soul. He's uh, not faking, you know, around. He's just uh, trying to do it as good as he can. And in between the take, we would just, uh, yeah, spend time together and have fun. And it didn't feel like working with him. It, it felt more like uh, mm -hmm. hanging out in time and space. And yeah, the limitation of a cell is actually quite helpful when it comes to <laughs> to building a relationship sometimes. You know, the great freedom, uh, sometimes you find it in the weirdest places. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll remember that next uh, uh, next relationship I'm in. We'll, uh, we'll get in a cell together. <clears throat> uh, Sebastian, um, when did you feel like this chemistry between them was really working? When was there a moment when you looked at them or heard them and said, yeah, they're, uh, I'm really seeing that, that relationship develop between Hans and Victor. Well, I knew it from the start, I have to admit. I knew it when I was writing the script uh, halfway. I, I knew it had to be them, um, otherwise I can't make this film. I knew that this chemistry would, um, would, um, would work, uh, I mean, would develop and would be there. And uh, the first uh, time um, when, I, when I knew it would work was when we met um, with makeup rehearsal in Vienna. Mm -hmm. We had a rehearsal, and uh, it was the first time they they both um, uh, came together, um, and we all came together and uh, um, uh, had had some lunch there in the in the studio. And um, I knew this is uh, this is going to be really great work with them. Mm. And just uh, uh, one detail, maybe I would like to add a little detail. Um, it's great that you are so satisfied with our. Um, relationship in the movie, but I think uh, from from my perspective, I have to to say that uh, it was only possible because uh, Sebastian trusted us um, in many ways more than just you know um, giving us the freedom to act what is actually in the script. We could uh, sometimes uh, rearrange scenes. We could um, improvise. We could. Um, always count on him listening to us and also, you know, calling us back if, we would, if we'd run in the wrong direction. So we felt like we can generously try things and if we'd fail, it wouldn't be failure. It would just be, you know, a, a learning process. And I guess that's the best that can happen to an actor to have this um, safe space and at the same time, somebody who's curious enough to try things. That's interesting. Can you give me an example, either of you, Sebastian or, or Franz, about uh, a scene where uh, you, you rearranged it on the spot or improvised something that was really enlightening to the scene? Well, well you know, the, the, the change is the one change is not that big, but often um, the emotion is not created just by an actor playing an emotion. It's also something that happens by the way you film something. So you might end up doing the same thing, but you, you'll be sitting on the floor instead of 
being on the same level as the other character, for example. And that might be a small thing, but it feels amazing to translate emotion sometimes into simple rearrangements in terms of space, for example. And this is something a, a director would do watching the scene and say, okay, great, amazing, just do it on the floor. But as an actor, to be involved also in the directing, that uh, it requires a lot of trust and and uh, collaborative approach from a director. And Sebastian is that kind of guy. He knows what he wants, but he's always open to to change his mind. Mm. Uh, Sebastian, would you like to add to that? Yeah, no, that is, uh, I think uh, the, for me, the most important thing is to, to create as the, to create a shared vision, you know, from the whole thing, because um, um, it's not, I mean, what is in my head is, uh, it's one thing, but um, to get it on the, on the screen, this is so, um, it's so difficult and, um, and, and to, to make it believable, you have to, you have to work together and you have to, I mean, you have to listen to to uh, to to the actors. Uh, they say, "No, this doesn't feel right. Let's try it this way." And um, I mean, there are so many decisions to make. You know, from um, where to go, from where to stand up. Am I sitting on the bed? Am I sitting on the floor? Am I going there? Is it? You know, all these little decisions lead to um, to to a bigger um, to, to to a bigger thing. And um, and this is what what made the work so great that 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 everything was questioned in a way, and we we were trying to find uh, the same vision of uh, how the characters move and how they react and uh, when they react in in what way and 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 uh, yeah, and I think this is uh, very important to to um, to to um, create the same vision about about these characters. Uh, <clears throat> one thing was a little bit uh, unhealthy. Uh, Sebastian is a chain smoker from time to time, and Georg <laughs> as well. And <laughs> since since they were my biggest uh, sources of inspiration, I started smoking all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we will file, see you file a complaint against Sebastian. That you can you can uh, blame him for any <laughs> medical expenses you incur. Uh, so, the, over the course of the film, the two characters uh, age around thirty years, a little less than thirty years. So, uh, when we see Hans fresh out of the concentration camp, uh, you you did succeed in making him seem very thin and. Uh, and worn, and uh, we certainly see Georg, uh, or I should say, uh, Victor, worn down by time. Uh, can you tell me, uh, both of you, can you tell me anything about the the changes you went through, the markers you used to to show uh, where you're checking when you're checking with them over the decades, physically and and emotionally? What were some of the things you talked about those uh, representing those changes? To well, there was the, the the makeup, of course. Um, so we had a lot of rehearsals, and um, but uh, with the with the makeup artists, we said from the start, we, we uh, let's try not to overdo it. Let's try to be as simple as possible, and um, um, and then there was what what we discussed with uh, Franz um, very early in the in the in the in the preparation. Is uh, the losing of weight like twelve? France lost like twelve kilos, thirteen kilos. Um, so we shot in two blocks because we said we we need in with all these artificial um, things like um, aging in makeup, we need a, a a point where 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 the change from one time to the other is is real. You know, something is different about this guy. He's um, he, yeah, of course he's thinner. And um, so, so this is maybe subconsciously, but I think it, it does something to to feel, okay, time has really passed. Um, mm -hmm. And um, and and mm -hmm. then with the stages, yeah, we knew because um, because we have these gaps in between. We have um, uh, his life outside is more or less um, off screen, so uh, we knew every time we we come with him in another phase. 
um, of imprisonment, he has to have a complete other energy. This is what we worked a lot about. Uh, we worked a lot with Franz, no? And, um, and yeah, so in the 40s, he's like uh, this um, broken uh, animal, but still with dignity. And in the 50s, he's a rebel. And in the 60s, he's uh, calmed down and, mm -hmm. and, um, and resignated in a way. So um, uh, this is what we worked, what we discussed a lot and a lot and worked a lot. Yeah. Franz, you have anything to say about that that transformation? And I'm sure the great fun you had losing so much weight. <laughs> yes, uh, it was an amazing process. Um, um, I can share all the details with you later. Um, <laughs> It's it's uh, quite simple. You have to eat less than you burn, and then you will uh, lose weight. And um, I must say, I must admit, I was quite surprised how much it also influences your um, feelings. So mm. I I was very sad losing so <laughs> much weight, and I, I could use <laughs> the sadness. And I was very weak, and at the end, I could not even. Uh, walk the staircase properly and uh, I have no idea how some actors lose like 20 25 kilos it's like 50 pounds I, I, I literally don't know how that's even possible so but I could use this suffering and it felt also kind of truthful um, and respectful to the role not mm -hmm. to try to know how it feels to have been in a concentration camp which which I'd never tried to act but to create a physical reality of of tiredness and weakness. Mm. Yeah. But you also lost uh, lost these 12 kilos in a very short time, we have to say, because... Um, yeah, it's true. Uh, I lost it even twice uh, because of our uh, uh, corona um, uh, break. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Oh, no. during the COVID... Yeah, it's, it's very sad. I, I lost all, <laughs> the, all, the, all the fat and I looked great and then uh, COVID hit and I ate a lot of pancakes again. And then <laughs> five months later, um, yeah, we could finally shoot the scene. And it was kind of uh, a gift because everybody, you know, had lived these five months in a different setting. But uh, when we came back, um, it was it, we instantly connected uh, again. And then it felt like something had happened, uh, had happened. And, and therefore, these 40s, also felt different, but losing this weight, gaining it and losing it again is something I can definitely not uh, recommend. <laughs> so, so we can blame Sebastian for inflicting smoking, uh, weight loss and sadness upon you. We can always blame <laughs> Sebastian. Uh, so I, I, late I'm in, guilty. <laughs> late in your film, I, <clears throat> I started thinking of one of my favorites, Kiss of the Spider Woman. Um, mm. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, mm. there, right when I had the thought of Kiss of the Spider Woman, I swear that was a moment when Victor put his arm around Hans in bed and we see the spider tattoo, uh, the web tattoo on his mm. elbow. Not that your film is like, I mean, that's a, that film is kind of a flight of fancy. Um, but I am curious about how filmmakers make certain stylistic choices. And uh, you start your film with some pretty frank depictions of sex. And I wonder why you chose to set the tone of your film that way. Mm. <clears throat> well, we had these um, these um, images. They were real. I mean, they 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 really existed. So um, um, we had found footage from um, from from the U.S. I think it was. Um, the state of Maine, maybe I don't know. It's, it's, it's somewhere in the in the Midwest. So, so I think mm -hmm. they they made these uh, recordings. Um, they were behind the the, the mirrors and um, mm -hmm. the police, and um, were filming these people with on sixty millimeter. And mm -hmm. um, we we knew that, that these uh, things were made in Germany as well, like um, in Hamburg. And mm -hmm. uh, but we couldn't find any footage from Hamburg, so um, we used these uh, rec these uh, images as a as a reference, and um, 
Um, yeah, I think it was uh, just uh, important to to um, to open the film with the state of mind um, our character is living in. So ah. this is what 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 he does. This is what mm -hmm. he is. Um, this is what what he's trying to what he's longing for. He's longing for encounters and and um, and and he's longing for love too. And um, and that's that's for this. He's uh, put in in jail. So um, yeah, this is I think was uh, was why why we decided to to start to open it this way. It's not about the sex. It's about um, it's about the character um, and um, and and he's uh, he's being lost in the world in a way. Yeah, I found his reaction. To watching the footage, uh, uh, revealing that he he was almost blank to it, like, yeah, that's me, yeah, you got mm. me again. Um, mm. We're almost out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, by way of, of saying that, I, I really admired the way the story developed, and that it developed in a way that uh, I think no Hollywood studio would allow one of their films to develop because it doesn't follow the structure that is imposed on so many Hollywood films uh, that it. It becomes a friendship story, then a love story. Um, I wonder how people react to the ending. Um, since you've this thing's been in the world now, you must know how people have responded to it uh, because it's not exactly a laugh riot comedy. But when Hans <laughs> broke the glass, I started laughing. You know, in sort of relief. I was like, "Oh, good, he's gonna." You know, he'll be back with <laughs> he'll be back with Victor. So, uh, how do you think people are are taking that ending? Are they are, are they laughing at him, or are they kind of sad that that he feels like he has to go back to prison to be fulfilled? Uh, both of you, what have, how people responded? Well, it has all. There's everything. This is what I like about this ending. Mm -hmm. Some people are sad. Some people are very happy. Some people find it so romantic, and the other ones find it so. Um, uh, depressing and <laughs> and uh, some people are laughing out of relief um, so um, we have all the uh, how do you say the variety of <laughs> all the feelings in this ending with what I really which I really really like because um, I think the ending of a film has to have something um, um, has to confront the audience again um, and say we don't relieve you <laughs> and uh, and uh, go home happily. You have to have to have something to think about and something to that's disturbing in a way and something um, that makes you um, yeah um, 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 think what you've seen. Yeah. The France, have anything to add to that, or or if not, then how people respond to the film to you. Um, yeah, I think uh, most people I talk to, they like this ending. Um, they like the fact that he, you know, he, he has lived through structural violence for a very long time. Therefore, the structure surrounding him can't provide him with a uh, space that he could live and love in. So therefore, he goes back to where he comes from, where he could uh, find relationships. And I think that's Something that from the start uh, inspired me about this character Hans, that um, the freedom of his is actually based not on fighting against the system, but accepting it and surrendering to it, which is a very interesting approach also towards revolution. I mean, some people say you have to break the system and crack it wide open, but others say you have to actually become a part of the system and understand it to change it. And it's a very twisted approach to that concept, but it always uh, inspired me. Um, and I know that my mom is very happy that the ending is the way it is. Oh, well, that, she's the only one who matters, so. Um, gentlemen, I want to uh, thank you so much for um, sharing your insights into the film with us and, and for sharing the film with us. Congratulations again on all the acclaim it's received Thank in the you. short listing. Uh, so folks, uh, um, I hope you enjoyed our, our talk with Sebastian Misa and Franz Rogowski. Um, thank you for joining us for the Honorable Live screening series and we hope to see you all soon, hopefully in person. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.
Bye.